Hey, how are you? I'll, um, tonight I'm really excited to be sharing some tips about transitioning back from um, back to work and also school without returning to busyness of probably before ISO or COVID-19. And yeah, so I'll be sharing um, throughout this workshop. I'll first share um, what life about was before COVID-19 and how stress is maybe impacting your family. And then we'll look at some of the new routines you've developed during COVID-19. And then finally, I'll share some tips to help you um, continue to keep some of those routines that you wanna keep that you've now established and you're like, yeah, I really like this new lifestyle. And um, you wanna keep those as you now transition back into work life and school as our new normal. And then at the end, I'll share uh, tips. I'll share them if, if you're like, oh yeah, that's great. That's, that sounds really perfect, but I need a little helping hand to do this. And then I'll share with you how you can, um, I can help you with that part at the very end. So um, first I'll start off with then if, um, I'll start off with just about me because I know there's a few people in this group and I know since um, COVID-19, I started the Calm Your Mind and Body um, five days and I probably haven't been as active in here as what I was previous to this, previous to that and, and before even COVID-19 um, because just life's been busy with kids. And so, um, yeah, so this week I sort of got that inspiration last week and it was like, oh, this is a perfect time to maybe share um, a little bit, some tips around transitioning back. Sort of, I don't know, I just felt overwhelmed and I'm sure other people were feeling overwhelmed after, over the past, um, pretty much, what are we, week six? Week six of um, learning at home with your own kids. So um, yeah, I did take a break. And I also have been working in the Mind and Body Studio. So helping those people um, as well. So I have spent a bit more time there. But I got this inspiration and thought it'd be really nice to do a workshop um, in this group tonight. So basically I was became a PE teacher 20 or 20 something years ago. Um, I've always been really organized type of person and really enjoyed teaching people about health and wellness. And that's why I became a PE teacher. Um, you know, traveled, met my husband. We lived in Melbourne and had both kids in Melbourne. And then we moved to Geelong. And when we moved to Geelong um, was when I was like, not particularly, satisfied maybe in my job and felt there was something more. I also became really busy with the two kids and realized when I uh, so started doing the wellness coaching qualification and realized when I was doing that, that I needed to slow down. And there was areas in my life that I needed to change. Um, so a couple of those, one was definitely my eating. I was falling into habits of just um, being too busy during the day and just grabbing snacks and um, then sort of had some health issues around um, eating because I was just grabbing stuff to basically get by and, and and it led to sort of sugar. Sugar was the thing. I'll grab some of that. It'll just get me by. Um, what was the other thing? And also just taking on too many things. So saying yes, I had no boundaries whatsoever um, before I started doing my wellness coaching qualification and I would just say yes to everything. A real people pleaser, um, still can, still fall into that trap sometimes, but um, since doing the qualification, definitely realized that was one of the things I needed to work on and have been working on it since then. So that's uh, maybe five, four years, four years now. Um, what else was there that I wanted to, oh, and so then um, I've just been doing a little bit of casual relief teaching because I sort of stopped doing it um, for about, I don't know, for maybe three months and I missed it. So. I've gone back, but just as one day a week, which is enough to just satisfy my need of teaching in a classroom. And I actually really enjoy teaching um, adults and, and mums in particular around um, wellness and putting themselves first and, and finding time. And I've, over the past two years, been doing my own um, sort of transition with restorative um, practices and sleep, probably around sleep. 
Um, so that's what I've become more um, passionate about and sharing with the people that I work with as well. And so, yeah, it was two and a half years ago. No, it's coming up to three. Three years um, in August that my son was diagnosed with autism. And when he was diagnosed with autism was when I realized I needed to slow down and actually start to prioritize um, rest. Because for me to be able to be patient with him, I really needed to start to stop and rest myself. So, you know, um, we think productive time is, um, you know, getting things done, but I actually realized it was about the rest and the restorative practice. So I have been practicing yoga for 20 years or more since when I was in London was when I started doing it. And um, when I finished my teaching degree, and real, and I was the real flow, go there, it needed to be fast moving and feel like I've had a workout. Whereas three years ago, I started to practice yin yoga and other restorative forms of yoga and then nidra meditation online. And that's when I just was like, this is actually what my body needs. I can go to the gym and go walking and that's that part of movement that I need. But actually my body really needed this um, form of rest. and. Um, like some of the things that I've learned over the past two years since actually then doing my teacher training in, is, in it is that people, if we want to lose weight, um, we want to, you know, the focus on different things and change different habits, we actually need rest. Like if we don't have our, if we're not rested, our body actually can't, our brain cannot help us to make those changes. So rest is actually one of the most important things that I've come to realize um, out of everything. So that sort of then led me into the teacher training, which sort of made sense as a PE teacher to go and do teacher training in yin yoga and nidra meditation and restorative um, types of yoga. And so for the past 12 months, I've been teaching here in Geelong. And since um, I so I started then moving online and doing it online. So it's been great doing that and I've really enjoyed it, but I do miss the actual people in the class and I'm looking forward to whenever um, the studio opens up again and and so are some of the students as well. So um, that's pretty much my background story and how you know I came to um, to where I am with my journey and you know with wellness coaching, Nidra and in um, meditation and even my teaching. So to me it sort of feels like I know some people say oh it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate but it actually just feels like a natural progression oh, and there is one more thing. So as I suppose since um, my son's diagnosis, I've started while I've been in ISO and not teaching apart from one day a week, um, I've been able to really focus on um, helping in particular people, families with um, organizational challenges with, uh, with ASD children, so autistic children. So that's been fantastic to pick up some clients over the past, um, what is it, seven weeks and be working with them. Hey Kate, hey Simone. Um, so yeah, I'm really, um, really excited about that and it's been great to be able to now really niche down and work with some families, um, you know, with those challenges and um, really be able to use the skills, my organisational skills with those, those families. So I have got notes and I have got slides so I know otherwise at this time of the night I can't um, stay focused and won't, or probably miss stuff. So I'll start off with the jar and I haven't got it here with me. I have done this before in the group so you could probably look back and you would find it. But if I had a jar, an empty jar, and I filled that jar up with uh, sand and, oh sorry, with rocks, big rocks, and those rocks are like my dreams, um, my hopes, my family, my immediate family. Um, and then I got some little rocks and I put them around the outside and filled the rest of the jar. And those things are like my, maybe my career, um, my extended family, my friends and my hobbies. And then I got some water and sand and I filled up the rest with that. And the sand and the water are like scrolling on social media, doing errands, shopping, cleaning the house, you know, just those, that to do list type of things. Um, you know that's sort of that perfect jar but if we start with the if we start with the sand and the water first it means we can't fit in all of those other things those hopes and the dreams 
So it's like, and I feel like this, that analogy is perfect at the moment with, um, you know, being in ISO, it's sort of taken people back and instead of having just the jar full of sand and water, they're able to take their jar back to um, being able to put their rocks back in and then just a few of those small stones and then top it up with the sand and water. And hopefully other people around them have maybe taken on some of that sand and water so that they're not just doing it all by themselves. So if you think of that analogy right now for yourself, do you feel like, um, yeah, that right now, give me a thumbs up if you feel like, yep, you've taken back and your jar is looking more like it's got the big stones, the small rocks, and only a little bit of sand and water rather than maybe what it was looking like um, before ISO. So we only have a 168 hours in a week which really doesn't sound that much when you put it put it into that um, figure, that number. And so, you know, if you think about all of the things that you do, like where are you spending your moments? Where are you spending all of your time? And I know for myself, so this was pre prior to ISO, I was like, um, you know, kids, kids definitely activities. We were running them around. And even then they only had two like sports they were doing but when you add in trainings and things like that it just adds up and I felt like we were every single night of the week apart from Friday night we had something on um plus my own like so teaching yoga two nights a week um you know that just adds up onto the top of it so that has definitely um stopped at the moment um, one thing that has though filled up a bit of that space during the daytime is like my son's therapist sessions and I probably didn't realize how many sessions he had a week because most of them were done at school so his therapists go into his school and um, and do those sessions with him and so I were, wasn't taking him or doing any of that whereas at the moment he's been doing them online and um, yeah they take up a lot of time and now you know, schools returning next week, those sessions will not, the, the therapist can't actually go back into the school maybe till the end of term three. So it's finding ways now that he can still do those, but it may be after school or he's going to be late to school to do those and maybe do them first thing in the morning. But it's just definitely something for me that we've become more mindful of that he does have a lot of time and a lot of, um, you know, therapists. So maybe he needs to scale back some of his sporting activities at times as well. Um, time for exercise. So for me, I think that's probably scaled up compared to scaling back at the moment. I feel like my only outlet in the morning is, well, my outlet is in the morning is to go and do some sort of movement. Um, I, I just need to get out of the house. And so it's for, like I'm going out for a walk two mornings a week and I'm actually meeting two, we can get back to meeting um, another friend but, but for a few weeks, I wasn't even able to do that. And I was finding it really difficult because it had to be then when it was daylight. Whereas we can go back to like meeting at six now and, you know, doing that hour of walk and then back in time to be able to, you know, get kids ready for um, learning. But I, and so I really struggle doing anything online um, because I just need that time outside of the house. Actually, I do my um, gym in the shed, but I feel like I'm out of the house. So... Uh, it's a bit cold to do yoga out there. So there are just one session I'm doing of yoga at the moment online because it's more about the need to get out of the house and it's that one activity that I'm doing. Um, maybe as of next week when um, my teaching hours are back at, at school and, um, and I'm doing another person's job for another day, yeah, I'll definitely maybe not need that leaving the house and doing that exercise outside of my house um, as much because I'll be leaving the house in the first place. So yeah, I'd be interested if that's how you're feeling too, that you're maybe moving more, even just going for a walk because you just need that time away from everybody else and, and some space from everyone else. Um, so that's definitely increased for me, um, whereas, yeah, it probably, yeah, compared to what it was. Um, Probably friends, so I'm not seeing people and that time of socialization has definitely decreased. You know, our nights here are pretty quiet, apart from maybe teaching my yoga online on Tuesday night. Um, there's not a lot going on, which is, which is nice, but at the same time, I feel like we've made that up to doing a bit of work online. So that's creeped back in for me. 
mainly because two, I'm working with my kids, well, one of my children during the day. The other one's pretty self-sufficient and all right, but the other one needs just literally one-on-one -on -one the whole time. So I feel that some of my business work has had to happen at night time just to make it up because I haven't had time during the day. Um, or just don't have that time where you can really concentrate. And so that's probably creeped into my night and it's definitely something I don't want to continue um, once things like, um, yeah, change again. I don't want to be working my nights. Um, yeah, so probably your work, like for me, definitely my work has changed. I'm not, um, you know, CRT teaching, but I am working with some families. Some of it's online and some of it is um, face to face at the moment. Um, so yeah, it, it would be interesting to see if you did a time audit on your own, how many hours you're spending doing different variety of things compared to what you were maybe doing. Um, so it was good for me to write down this and actually go through what, um, you know, what I've been, what's, what's changed and looking at the different times for myself. Um, the next one is like looking at could versus should. So I know myself, I found myself always saying, oh, I should do this. I, I, sh I you know, that people pleasing perfectionism um, would come in and I would say, oh, I should be doing this. Instead, like I definitely am more aware of my language and using, oh, I could go for a run, but I'm feeling tired tonight. So that language we use is so powerful. Um, you know, our subconscious mind. So definitely from doing my Nidra training, um, learned a lot about subconscious mind and the benefit of um, meditation because it's a great way to change those stories that we tell ourselves and access our subconscious mind um, through meditation. So it doesn't matter what we, um, we can say these things and our brain just takes it on and it's, oh, it's true, that must be true. And whereas when we access our subject, subconscious mind, in particularly through um, Nidra Yoga, you can actually change that story and your brain doesn't know oh, whether that's true or not. It just takes on that new story. So we usually set an intention and that intention is in like a positive statement, like an I am statement, present tense. Your brain doesn't know whether it's present tense or past tense. So if it's present, it's like, oh, well, we must be doing this now. I must be... Um, I must be enough now or I, I you know I must be well enough or rested um, enough so it takes on those new um, those stories um, another thing was uh, I couldn't say no I didn't have my bound um, boundaries around me and I know for myself I wanted to be able to work on that so that I could be a good role model for my children and show them how to set boundaries um, it's like a secondary gain. So I've, I've learned a lot through um, kinesiology as well, working with a kinesiologist. So sometimes we will do things and the reason we're doing it is to fulfill something, something else in our life. So maybe fulfilling that need to be enough. So um, I would say yes to things, um, basically to get that secondary gain of feeling enough. Um, but what would I would notice is later on when the anger or the resentment about saying yes. And so definitely by doing um, Nidra and Yin, um, both of those have allowed me to look at my emotions and help me to release those blockages, those emotions in my body and really tune in to where they are. So I definitely now I'm able to listen to my intuition so much more. So, you know, when... Um, you get that feeling you're like, yeah, I don't think this is right. So even someone asking me to work, um, to do some more work over the next, um, what is it, four weeks, five weeks until school finishes holidays, it was like, okay, I just got that feeling in my gut. And it was like, I could do some of that, but not all of it. That is definitely won't fit in with our family. And as soon as I emailed back, I felt so much better setting, this is what I could do, but I couldn't do all of this. And they were happy to, to sort of work with me and make those changes. Um, three years ago, there's no way. I would have just said yes, and then I would have felt the resentment. I would have felt the anger, um, and it just would have boiled up and probably over boiled over onto my whole family instead. So definitely from doing meditation, yin and nidra yoga for myself, that has helped me to really tune into my intuition and, um, and my emotions and really... Yeah, and then look at them because rather than 
I would always try to move through those negative emotions rather than sit with them and let them rest for a bit and then work out, okay, what do I really want to do? I would just um, try to move through them and, and one of my other things was try to be busy because that is a great way of overriding those negative feelings because if you're ticket I would get that adrenaline rush from ticking off my list so if I'm busy ticking off my list I then am um, not having to sit in that anger or that sadness um, whereas now because I've learned some strategies around how to deal with those emotions I can sit with those emotions a lot better now rather than just trying to rush through them by being busy so um, and then the third bit about you know the boundaries and things like that is is being available 24 7 you know we have these um our technology is 24 7 now and it'll be interesting to as we come out of iso as well having that technology available and working online it's about us now setting those boundaries and like i said before i know that my curfew for technology before iso was definitely like nine o'clock if i was doing something like this um, but I wouldn't be scrolling on social media or anything like that. I'm probably, I'd rather do that earlier in the day. I can't do it later at night. And so, yeah, my um, boundaries around that have definitely gone to the wayside at the moment because I want to work with my son at the moment. He really needs our support. So therefore, my sacrifice has been working a little bit more at night. But it's something I want to definitely not be doing um, you know in the next three weeks three weeks time so I'm really clear about you know I, I understand that's happened right now but it's not something I want to continue doing so yeah I'll be having my trying to get that curfew back for technology and maybe you're the same maybe you found the same because I know so many people are juggling learning from home as well as their own job and like when can you get that uh, work done it's pretty much once the kids go to bed um, at night time or if you've got teenagers, you're you're doing it because they're maybe busy at night entertaining themselves and, and you've got that time to do your work. Um, uh, so I wanted to then look at stress. So, you know, think of how many times in a day that you reacted to being chased by a lion. So um, being chased by a lion triggers our sympathetic nervous system and our nervous system then is activated our um, flight and fight response and you know the two cortisol and adrenaline are released and and that's I definitely I was addicted to that in some ways that feeling that adrenaline part of it and you know it then stops the distribution of blood to certain areas so our digestive system, um, which means that you know you can eat that, have that green smoothie in the morning, but it's not going to be digested, is it? Because your um, your digestive system, there's just not the blood flow there to help digest it. So um, you know if we're rushing in the morning, but we're trying to do that, that eating well, but then we're you know overriding it really by rushing, yelling, screaming, trying to get out, and we've triggered that stress response in our body as well. It also um, stops our prefrontal cortex, cortex so that our decision-making part of our brain switches off. And a great example of this, during um, a couple of weeks ago, my son was trying to do his work, his writing. So today we worked with a speech therapist and identified some really massive gaps in his learning, um, which is great moving forward. We'll be able to work with her. But um, he was trying to do some writing tasks and he was just getting really, really worked up. And he has been doing some group therapy as well. And one of the big focus in the group therapy was around recognizing anxiety and sat and anger. Anyway, the next, and he couldn't, that's right, he was trying to put the blocks together to do this, I don't know, it was an activity, but he had to stack. I just said, why don't you stack the blocks up and that'll help you. And um, he got really angry, pushed them aside. This isn't working. Anyway, he did do the rest of it that day. I think we packed up and that was it. And the next day he went back to do this activity and straight away he could do it, you know, straight away, no problems at all. And he was like, mum, uh, you know, I remember from, you know, SAS, it's called Secret Agent Society. I remember from Secret Agent Society learning about um, anxiety and stress and how your brain doesn't work properly. And he was like, my brain can work today, but when I was trying to do that yesterday, 
I could not make those decisions. I couldn't get those blocks to stick together how I wanted them to. So it was just a really great, you know, learning for him and hopefully he'll hold on to that for the rest of his life and be able to, you know, play back to it going, oh yeah, I'm really stressed so therefore I'm not making good decisions. Um, I know as a kid myself that definitely I had no idea about stress and the impact that had on my brain. Whereas, and even as I'm sure as a teenager and, and through uni, I didn't realize, whereas now I'm more aware and recognize and like, okay, maybe I need to go and have a break, a movement break like my kids do, um, just so that I can um, relax again and let my, you know, the blood flow back to my prefrontal cortex so I can make those decisions I need to make. Um, what was the other one I was going to say? Oh, our immune system, you know, our immune system's not functioning properly. And that's when we have things like autoimmune diseases happening because we're just living in stress mode all the time. Um, oh, and sleep. So sleep is hugely affected by our stress hormones. And so, yeah, and, and I find that that's probably one of the things that, um, you know, I hear a lot about from people, you know, that, that have those, the sleep when they've come to Nidra yoga. And even when I did um, one of the courses, that was one of the reasons a lot of the people did the course was because they were having sleep issues. So, um, yeah, and it, it's just amazing how um, beneficial that is or something along those lines, those meditation things um, to help you with um, healing. It's healing from living in stress mode um, all the time. So, and that's probably, that was definitely something I found from from doing it myself, from doing the nidra, is that I've actually probably healed myself from the stress that I was living in all the time. So a great, another really great analogy, and I'll share these slides um, in the group later on, um, is stress is like a with, is like a withdrawal drawal on your bank account. So imagine your bank account, and you're always taking things out of your bank account is the stress. So it's taking that money out and that money out and that money out day in, day out. And then um, and then basically we get to overdraft and that's when we see health issues um, arise because our, we're, in, we're bankrupt basically. So what we need to remember is that our bank account needs that deposits. It needs deposits to, to be able to keep it running smoothly and and um, counteract the stress effect. So things like um, eating well, movement, sleep, I'd say sleep, I should put sleep as first, sleep, eating well, movement, mindfulness, gratitude and switching off. And oh, I don't even have it here. <laughs> My picture of the three circles. So I will share it um, at the end and I've shared it all over my social media. But I've come up with a model based on another model that I saw, it was about students and productivity at university. And I've sort of tweaked it to be more around um, my coaching model. So I believe that you need to have um, three things. So this is like moving into the strategies that I believe. And I'll share, actually it's in the slide, I've got it in the slide here. So our, our energy is based up and it's our blue circle. It's made up of exercise, nutrition and sleep. And this is a really important area. And if we don't have those three things working well, that's when we'll see that we're feeling tired. And um, that's definitely one of the main sort of signs that it's not we're not functioning very well. The other um, circle is a yellow one, and that's our time um, circle. And that's around organization and planning. So if that one, if there's something that's not quite um, working well, then we're going to be feeling disorganized. And then the third circle is a light blue circle and that's our attention. And that is gratitude, switching off and mindfulness. And if we feel that that part for that bit isn't working quite well, it's when we're unfocused and um, we're feeling quite stressed. And um, we can't, so, so that, that mindfulness, um, we're not being mindful with maybe our family or in the activities we're doing, we're just completely, um, overthinking things is the word I was trying to think of. So if those one of those circles isn't functioning well, that's when we see, you know, we're not really productive, we're not happy, we're not calm, and we're not living really the life that we want. Um, and I know that lots of wellness coaches pretty much work on, you know, exercise, nutrition, and sleep. I believe it's all three of those areas. And obviously, 
being like my organization is definitely one of my strengths attention wasn't and that's one of the things that I've been focusing on over the past um, three years for myself as well as now because I've seen the importance and the transformation for myself um, I believe that that's probably the one of the most important parts and I'm really passionate about sharing that with people now I suppose exercise since I'm a PE teacher you know that's been part of my life for a very long time nutrition the same um, working with a naturopath you know for over 20 years myself as well as um, my kids and my daughter has had allergies for what is she 11 and we're actually doing some gut health stuff with her at the moment again so um, yeah those things I feel like uh, I've talked the, the to death about them and it's actually these other areas that um you know that i've been working on that i feel really passionate about sharing so energy i'll focus on that one first and give you just a couple of tips so two tips i'll share two tips with each one um before finishing so energy i might just have a drink um so developing a sleep routine um i think is one of the really important things that helps us with our energy um our sleep, the best sleep that we get is between 10 and 2 a.m. And our body is rejuvenating itself. Um, it's regulating your core body temperature, it's cleaning your organs, it's repairing cells, um, and it's consolidating your memories from the day. And that's why it's so important to have a really decent sleep between those hours, is those memories um, and that process is really important for our body and important for our productivity, um, particularly the next day. So one of the other great tips, it's, it's energy, but it's also probably organization, but it's to do with your brain, is if you write down what you wanna do, achieve the next day, your brain actually that night actually starts to work on those tasks for you. So the next day when you go to do it, you actually feel, oh wow, this is really easy. It's because your brain has actually been working on that throughout the night for you processing, trying to put the plate bits in place for you, ready for the next day. So that's a really great tip about writing down what you want to achieve or do the next day, the three, you know, three tasks you, you really want to do, then your brain is um, preparing and getting you ready for it for the next day. So a sleep routine, um, they sort of say between one and two hours of dimming your lights and um, and preparing your body. So I have done, been doing a little bit of um, study around cycles, like our natural cycles of light and dark and how our bodies have become used to the fluorescent lights and um, even just the city lights. And so our cycles are not like they used to be and watching TV and now we're watching blue, blue light from our screens, it's, uh, it's disrupting our cycles. So that's why it's so important to have that dimming effect of the lights and allowing your body to then go back into its natural rhythm and cycle, as well as the moon. Like the moon's really important in our whole cycles as well, our, um, our rhythm, our sleeping rhythms as well. So the next one around energy is moving every day. So as I shared before, I, you know, over this ISO period, I think it was just reinforced to me how important it is to move every day in whatever way it is, whether it's even stretching for five or 10 minutes, doing one yin, you know, yin shape, going out and walking, walking around the block. You know, it releases those endorphins and dopamine and gets your blood moving and you just feel so much happier when you get back and patient and you're able to deal with you know everyone around you after doing some movement um yeah so definitely that is um they would be my two tips around helping you to boost your energy around organization so creating family routines and this is one of the things that i work a lot with um with the families with um ASD children and organizational challenges is around creating family routines. So it might be weekly routines, daily routines. So, you know, it might be around um, drop offs, school drop offs, after school activities. Our brain likes routines, it likes to know the predictability and what's coming next. And when we don't have that, that's when we don't cope, our kids don't cope. Um, and you would have found that like at the start of ISO. 
people were feeling overwhelmed and stressed because they had to adapt to new routines. I feel like last week our family had got into their new routine and a rhythm and it was probably one of the first weeks that we were feeling calm and everyone's ready and we're about to go into like another change again. So again, we're going to feel that stress, that overwhelm because we're starting to make new routines. Our brain's not going to like it and um, it's going to take some time to adjust to these new routines. So being able to look at your routines and try and find like one or two that you could keep would be great from now um, just to help your brain cope moving into this next change and your children as well. Um, so yeah, that would be my number one. It's looking at a routine that you can try and keep and um, just to add that predictability into your life moving forward. Um, just trying to think one of ours, definitely our nighttime routine um, has changed a little bit. Uh, you know, I would have to plan, I would be planning meals and prepping meals on a Sunday for at least three nights of the week, whereas now I'm just doing it for one because my husband's working from home at the moment. So um, yeah, he's around so we can sort of juggle that and one of us might be playing with the kids, you know, at 5.30 when we get off, everyone's off technology and the other one's getting dinner ready. So um, I'd love to keep that. I don't know if we will, but it would be a really nice routine, at least maybe one or two two days if he continues to work from home. So I'm hoping that ha that happens and he doesn't return to Melbourne five days a week. Um, the next one around organization is writing things down. So again, your brain likes um, to create ideas. It doesn't like to store ideas. So, um, oh no, I've forgotten, David Allen, yeah, it was David. David Allen has got this great video and it talks about our brain. And if you don't write things down at two o'clock in the morning, your brain will just remember and say, oh, remember you've got to ring that person about their birthday or message that person for their birthday. It'll just keep reminding you at random times throughout the day, night. It just keeps bringing it back up like, oh yeah, I need to remind them again. I need to remind them. It doesn't know the time. So if we actually take those things out and write them down somewhere, our brain can do what it's supposed to be doing and that's creating ideas, not storing them. So one of the things um, that I've learned and taken on board in my life with um, from David Allen is um, writing things in context. So my to-do list has five, is it? Um, it has errands, so things I'm gonna do when I'm out and about in the car, things that I do on my computer, calls that I'm going to make, and things I'm gonna do at home. So I chose four. He has, I think, five, maybe, yeah, he has five or six. Um, but they're the four that I use. So the ones, the errands, I write down my list, all those things that I need to do when I'm out in my car, that way I'll look at my week and go, okay, I'm gonna be in my car this day over this side of town, I'll then do those particular activities. Oh, and later in the week, I'm gonna be here dropping my daughter or son somewhere, I'll do those particular things near there. I'm not gonna drive from one side back unless I really had to. Um, I sort of trace, like look at my week and work out when I'm going to do that. Calls, again, when I'm looking at my week, I'll look at, okay, uh, for example, I used to, when I'm, my daughter's dancing, I would then drop her off, go sit in the car for the 45 minutes, go back in, and I would make any calls that I need to make at that time. Um, and then computer, things that I need to do on the computer at night. These are mainly, these aren't particularly my work things, these are around um, home life. And, um, but you can use that context list as well for work. It does, you know, it does work as well. And then things that I do at home. So writing down all those things that you need to do around the house. Um, I don't know, like there was some hems on dresses and, and, sh and pants that need to be done in the next two weeks for the kids to go back to school. Looking at the winter uniforms and what needs to be purchased. Just trying to think what's on mine right now. Um, oh, my daughter has got this, wants to make pajamas. So that's on our home thing to do. Oh, a pot fell over and smashed out the back um, in that big storm the other day. And all the beautiful um, succulents are there, but the pot smashed. So I need to go get the pot. But then when I bring it back, I need to 
find the time to actually pot those succulents. They'll be all right for a week or so on the floor, but they need to go into a new pot. So it's writing those things in the context. It makes it so much easier then to work out when you're actually going to do it rather than a big long list of things. And then I would only also look at which three things I can do possibly that day. I don't put everything on the list and just move it across. I allocate three per day because that's a good amount for your brain to deal with. Um, unless, you know, depending on your work schedule. And then my final one, which is the last one, which is probably my favorite now is attention. So attention is that looking at being in the present moment, being focused. So, you know, there's so much talk about mindfulness and being mindful, but I'm sure you can all, um, can all, you know, relate to when you have driven somewhere and you've got there like work and you're like, I can't even remember how I got here and what, um, you know, what I did to get here. And you realize that you were thinking of a thousand things, the things you need to do when you get to work, things you were maybe going to do tonight when you get home from work. And you're just not in that present moment. Maybe the kids have been, you know, same thing. You've been doing an activity with them and then you realize, actually, I'm not even listening to them or focused because I'm thinking about something else I need to do for work. Um, or, you know, maybe it's something, maybe it's something about to do with family, but it's just occupying your mind rather than being in the present moment. So definitely that was something I was doing a lot of, but I think, and I'm pretty sure it's like, I mean, the research says it, but I'm actually agreeing with the research that being um, incorporating mindfulness, like such as meditation and gratitude, definitely gratitude as well, has helped me to be able to be more mindful in my life. Because before that, um, yeah, I had that overthinking and that monkey mind and being able to tune in um, to that mindfulness has stopped and stopped the overthinking, stopped the um, slowed down my brain and being able to be more mindful at times. So there my two tips is gratitude and gratitude doesn't need to be writing down things. Great if you can, but my tip would be um, to attach it to a habit you already do. So it's called habit stacking. So I would be doing putting it with something you already do. So for example, plugging your char phone into your charger at night before you go to bed. All you need to do then is state something that you are grateful for in your head to yourself while you do that, that um, action. I mean, when I used to be driving, it would be maybe when I was driving on my way home from work, I like to then think of three things that I were grateful for from, you know, from the day. So it's um, about doing it with something you already do in your life. So finding a, yeah, a habit you already do and attaching, maybe it's when you brush your teeth. So when you're brushing your teeth, just thinking of something in the morning or at night time that you're grateful for and why, why you're grateful for it. It helps to increase our happiness. Um, you know, we what are the 80% of our thoughts are negative and only 20% positive. But by doing gratitude, it actually helps us then to not stay in that negative mindset um, and train our brain to be more in the positive. And, and I'm sure you can relate to those people who then you catch up with and they're negative and negative and then you walk away and you might have even then jumped into the negativity whereas definitely by having that gratitude practice in your life it's a lot easier to then not jump into the negativity um, once you've been doing gratitude it's also great for kids so I, I really love at dinner time doing it and because you know the natural um, instinct for a ASD child or maybe even adults as well, but for us, what we've found is the negativity. And um, by us helping my son to be um, grateful for things, so hopefully in the long run, one day, he will be more um, positive, a little bit more positive, but they are quick to jump to the negativity. He's also really um, quick to, to put himself down and they're not, intrinsically motivated like 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 I am um, you actually need external um, motivation so like reward type things for lots of those behaviors because they're just naturally not intrinsic so I suppose it makes sense that then he really struggles with the positivity if he's not naturally 
um, motivated, intrinsically motivated. So that is something we've been trying to do at dinner time um, is put a gratitude practice about our day. So everyone shares one thing about their day. I know for my staff meeting, we do it every staff meeting. We have to share something about their day. You know, I see lots of online businesses using it in their business meetings as well. So yeah, so it's, it's becoming more well known and people are doing it. Um, whereas I'm sure what, seven years ago, definitely wasn't wasn't being um and that's definitely the um positive psychology the research behind that which you know project thrive are amazing andrea downing has some great research that she's done herself plus um from melbourne uni um all the research they do around positive psychology so there's lots of evidence now about gratitude and then the second tip then around attention for me would be is breath you know it's the one tool that we have that we can use anytime, we can just tune into our breath. Our breath is our natural calming tool. And so, yeah, you can access that anytime. Anytime that you're feeling, you know, that stress level um, rising, it's like just taking a step back and just breathing. Breathing three breaths. Um, you know, I've done on here that alternate nostril breathing because you can't worry when you're trying to focus on your breath you definitely can't worry when you're doing that alternate nostril breathing you've got to focus so when you're focusing you can't be worrying as well and um, so it's a great one to then allow your nervous system to slow down calm and um, and then refocus again so yeah, breath. And again, I find that we need to we need to practice that. So it's great to use that one um, as a habit stacking as well. Whether it's yeah, putting your charge your phone on your charger, something you already do every day, and then just focusing on your breath. And that's something I do in the car. I'll do you know deep breaths when I'm driving in the car. Every time I stop at the um, traffic lights, that was my habit of. Um, trying to incorporate more breath before I started doing yin and nidra yoga. Now I just, yeah, I'm definitely more inclined to use it um, than I did. I, I just think of years ago what I was like and gosh, I wish I had have known what I know now. Um, I'm sure I would have been a different person and my stress levels definitely would have been better. So if you have loved some of these tips and you're like, yeah, I need to do more of these, in my life to continue holding on to some of those routines you're loving and just holding on to that slower pace at the moment then the mind and body studio which i started at the start of iso um is a is a yin and nidra yoga as well as coaching as well as a um wellness what have i called it? wellness um, master classes so i interview other health experts, health industry experts um, that I've worked with and about their tips. So it's a it's a great um, a great way to meet some different people and actually be able to then move and work with different people that you've maybe like gone, oh I really love a nutritionalist. I'd love to see, you know, hear from someone. So it's just people that I really respect um, that I've interviewed and share, they get to share their information and you just build that relationship with them a lot quicker because you're hearing them because I'm interviewing them about their tips. Um, yeah, and then there's weekly yin, um, yin sessions which are held in a Facebook group but there's other people in the Mind and Body Studio who don't use Facebook and so they just access the studio which is straight online and that way I'll upload it by the end of the week um, for them to access that way. So it's, they've got two, you've got two ways of using it, either just straight in the Facebook group or otherwise um, on the online studio, which is just all. So I've been doing it um, via my website, but now I've just built basically like a learning platform, a bit like if you're using Seesaw for kids like that, but in my, on my own website. So yeah, over the last, what is it, six weeks, I've been building that and it's finally all finished. And um, yeah, and so it has now proper login as well, which is great. So it's your own login as well as your own password for yourself. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty proud that I've finally finished it and it's all ready to go. And then the other thing is meditation. So the meditations have been, I did a live Nidra last week, which they'll have access to. I've got some recordings in there of Nidra as well, so they can just put your earplugs in and that's when I listen to it and when I go to bed. 
Um, there's also two, um, two short meditations, both with uh, audio as well as now a video, which I'm really excited. I've been working with a student from Sacred Heart um, and she's done some amazing videos. Um, so they're in there as well, as well as they're on my YouTube channel because my students are using those as well. And then, um, and then the coaching videos. So to help maybe maintain and support you in making these changes and continue, there are coaching videos um, and all the resources that go with um, wellness coaching. So a happiness journal, which just shows you the steps on setting goals and um, maintaining those goals as well. And yeah, so that is the that is the whole Mind and Body Studio. So you sort of walk away with that whole holistic approach. You know, it's, you know, building strength through the yin yoga, but it's also about the mind, your mind, body, um, and spiritual side as well. So that whole, yeah, package really. Um, so, you know, if there is, it is something that you've, You've got to try it and see if that's something you like. Um, but maybe it's not yin yoga. Maybe it's a different style of meditation. Um, but I definitely encourage people to go out there and try some forms of meditation and um, or yoga or, yeah, just switching off and, and some sort of mindfulness practice and really work on that attention side. So, yeah, that's all. I wanted to share tonight. I'd love um, if anyone wants to join me in the Mind and Body Studio, I'll put the link up. Um, yeah, but otherwise I'll be sharing, I'll share it next Tuesday when I'm doing the yin yoga, I'll share one shape in this group as well. And um, if anyone's got any questions, please, yeah, give me a yell out because yeah, I'm always answering questions um, through Messenger or um, Pretty much most of it's through Instagram, to be honest, um, in DMs as well. So yell out if you've got anything that you need to clarify. But if not, have a lovely night and, um, yeah, and all the best for the next two weeks with the transition for the kids back to school and work life for you as well.